Welcome back to the Prep Pros YouTube channel. My name is Matt, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to get a perfect 800 on the SAT math every single time. I've gotten a perfect 800, I don't know how many, probably somewhere between 20 and 30 times on the SAT math. But I'm going to give you a little bit of twist today. I'm going to show you guys how to do a speed run through the March 2022 no calculator section. So I have not seen or done this section yet. So in this video, I'm going to go through it as fast as I can, but I'm also going to try and give you guys some explanations along the way. So with that said, let's get to it. Let me go ahead and set my timer. And three, two, one, let's go. Number one, as I read it, I see it's got 401 total votes, which means these are going to have to add to 401 so I can get rid of A and B. And then it says B is 37 fewer than C. If B is 37 fewer than C, we're going to have to subtract to make them equal. So number one is going to be C. Number two, we got to just do the math. So we can subtract 2P from both sides, which gives me 5P. Subtract 8 from both sides gives me negative 2. Divide by 5, which gives me negative 2 fifths. The answer is B. Uh, number three, uh, M is positive, so the slope's going to be positive. Y-intercept is positive, so it's got to be a positive slope, and it has to be a positive Y-intercept. The answer is C. Number four, we have to solve for H. And choice is give it away. We're solving for H, so we got to square both sides, which gives us Y squared equals HG over X. To solve for H, we've got to multiply by X, so Y squared times X, and divide by G. So we get our answer here of D. Number five, absolute value of x minus one is eight. What is the absolute value of x minus one? So this has to be positive or negative eight to equal eight. So the answer is gonna be A. Number six, we need to figure out what defines the function. We see our intercept here is at negative eight. So B and D are out. Now we gotta figure out the slope. Our slope here rises eight. The run looks like it's six. So the rise over run eight over six simplifies two, three over two. The answer is A. Uh, number seven, as I read it, it says the total is 5,000, and we're trying to find the number of phone in each survey. So we can go to this point here. We know that 125 phones times whatever the price is, it's supposed to be a dollar sign, has to add to 5,000. So a shortcut here, 5,000 divided by 100 is like 50, so it's got to be less than that for 125. Half is too small, so 40 makes sense. Number eight, which one's equivalent? Got to just do the math. 5x cubed minus 2x cubed is 3x cubed. All answers have that. Negative 2x cubed minus 2x, we just read the negative as minus 4x, so it's gotta be C or D. And then one minus one is zero, so the answer here is gonna be C. Number nine, looks like a similar triangle question, which it is. Which of the following piece of information is sufficient to prove that A, B, C is congruent? So we have these two angles. So we kind of look for having a third angle or having the side, and the answer here is going to be C, because if we have these sides, these are both similar via angle, side, angle. It's one of our similar triangle rules you should know for test day. Number 10 is exponent stuff. So we first have to simplify. We have to multiply here, power to a power. So it's still y to the 1 8 times y to the 9 over 8. Now the same base we add those becomes y to the 10 over 8, which simplifies the y to the five over four. We just need to know our way to go back to the root, which is our root uh, power fraction one. Answer is A here. Uh, 11, what is the value of sine of three pi over four? Just got to know the unit circle here. So drawing a quick unit circle, our value is over here for three pi over four. You have to know that it's root, uh, the value here is negative root two over two, root two over two, and the sine is the y. So it's positive root two over two uh, for 12 y equals 2 negative x plus 1. So if you plug in 0 here, it becomes 2 to the 0 plus 1. 2 to the 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2, which shows me the y-intercept has to be at 2. From there, we uh, I just know that a positive value 2 to the negative x is still going to be positive. It's not going to be flipped. So there's no negative sign in front. So it's A. 13, 10 plants are increased by 140% each year, which models it. Uh, so it has to be 10 as our starting value, and then it's 1 plus 140 or 1.4, so it's 2.4 in the middle. The answer is D. 14, we're trying to find the y-intercept of this graph. So what happens here? Well, the x plus 2 is going to shift this graph two units to the left. So if we think this graph shifts two units left, this point right here, if we shift it two units left, would be our new y-intercept, so it would be at 0, 3. 15... We're looking for no solution. So for no solution, we want the X and Y to be the same, but we wanna make sure that the number over here is different because no solution means the two lines have to be parallel, so they never cross. 
Uh, so A and C have different X to Y proportions. Both B and D are one to one, like two, we have two X, two Y, three, three, two, two. But B would be identical, the infinite solutions, because all of these, these are the same equations, just multiply it by 1.5. D is correct because it has different values of Y intercepts, so they'd be parallel lines. All right, onto the grid ends. 16, what's the value of g of 8? We're just plugging in 8, so it's just going to be 2 plus 8 is 10 over 8. We'd simplify that to 5 over 4. 17, it gives us the line and asks what's perpendicular. So perpendicular is just flip it uh, and make it negative, so this is going to be positive 1 8. 18, we're asked to solve for x, so we need to cancel the y's. We can multiply our top one by 3, our bottom one by 2, 3x plus 6y is equal to 33, and then we have, sorry, not 3, uh, that's right, 3x, uh, 6x plus 6y is equal to 48, we can subtract these so the y's cancel, I get negative 15, I get negative 3x, which means our value of x is going to be 5, done and done, 19 finishing up here, rectangular prism is similar, where the longest side corresponds, we're given the volumes, and we're told the longest side of our big one is this. All right, trick here is our rectangular prism is length times width times height. 96 to 12, we can see this top one is eight times as large, which means each of these, the length, the width, and the height, all have to be twice as big, because it makes the whole thing eight length, width, height. So basically we're doubling every side, makes it eight times as big, which means the length has to be three. Number 20 here I can right away see is, uh, I'm gonna have to use a quadratic formula because we have that five plus root n. So using quadratic formula, 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 100 minus four ac, four times one times 14 is going to be 56, all divided by two. So 10 plus or minus the square root of 44 over two. 44 simplifies to two root 11 over 2. So we get 5 plus or minus root 11, which means the end value here is going to be 11. If you learn how to go through the SAT math like that, you're going to have to learn two things. Number one, you have to learn all the content in the SAT. And number two, you're going to have to learn the shortcuts and techniques for how to answer questions quickly and easily. So there's two things I'd recommend that you do to try and get ready for test day. Number one is you have to do lots of practice tests. There's a link below that will show you where to go download a bunch of free practice tests. And number two, you have to, again, make sure you learn all the content and find the right resource. Now, one thing that we can help you with is we've written an SAT math book that'll teach you everything you guys need to know for the test. There's a link below to grab one of these. It will absolutely help you. Additionally, since learning from books is hard, we've also have a video course that goes not only with the math book, but with the entire SAT. We call it the ultimate SAT course. There's a link below for a free trial as well. So go ahead and sign up for that. Check it all out. It should help you guys a ton as you prepare for testing. Other than that, I'm Matt at Prep Rose. See you guys next time.